So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews for Hospital Radio Reading and for my YouTube channel. Um, and I'm super excited to be joined all the way from Western Australia by the fantastic Dan Paris. Thank you for joining me. Oh, thanks, Matt. Yeah, it's really nice to uh, to be uh, talking to you. I've seen a few of your interviews and they're, they're wonderful, actually. I really enjoy them. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, now, we, we, we must start off by talking about the strange world that we've been living in over the last two years, nearly. I mean, how has it been for you, um, you know, over in Western Australia? How, how has it been? Just just the whole weirdness. Yeah, um, pretty weird. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> I, uh, so I'm a photographer. I, I, I do a few things. I've got, um, I still got a um, finger in the acting pie. Um, got back into it a few years ago. Uh, had about 15 years off. So I've got a few acres in a little country town called Esperance, south of Perth, um, of land. And um, so, yeah, I'm a photographer in another world as well. And I do some videography as well. So COVID hit. All of that dried up. It was, yeah, because it's very one-on-one, -on -one, very personal. Um, I was, I lost every job I had in the diary, basically. So I thought, well, I've got a bit of land here, and the kids were showing an interest in, in growing vegetables. And I thought, well, yeah, I could sell a few vegetables down the markets. I've been doing it, you know, recreationally for for years now. So I started it, and being a dad that likes to take over more than he can manage, I um, well, I'll put it this way: I now grow um, chemical-free vegetables for about. 35 families every week we deliver a box and it's pretty rewarding actually it's really lovely so i can't i yeah I, look i'll be honest i've got a couple of lovely helpers the two girls today and i've had an agronomist work here and a horticulturalist work here and they're sort of stranded backpackers with the experience that are stuck here um so uh, it's been really helpful having them but uh you know i put the flannel shirt on i go out pull a weed or plant a carrot and then I get a phone call and that's it until five o'clock and they just laugh at me. So I don't do much there anymore, but um, yeah, I'm, and I'm away a lot. So, but it is, it's really lovely. So we've got nearly an acre that's um, planted out with vegetables at the moment. It must be mm. nice to be and able that's, to... That, I was going to say that's the, that's uh, it's actually probably COVID has been a real blessing for me because you know, if, if there are restrictions and there are, you know, obviously we've got travel restrictions, then I can work from home and, uh, you know, it's also delivery service too for um, a pretty healthy selection of um, vegetables. So we can, you know, particularly in the toilet paper frenzy that we had here. Did you have a toilet paper frenzy over there? Yeah, I don't know why. Don't know why. It's one of those items that I don't quite understand why people went mad for it, but no, it happened here as well. What did we do before toilet paper? I don't, it's always been around, I assume. Um, yeah, so, uh, yes, yeah, so that was really nice because people wanted home delivery and they were, um, willing to uh, take whatever resources locally they could get which for us worked really well yeah it, it must have been nice to be able to kind of give back to people and and to kind of you know be able to help them out because there were a lot of people here in the uk i'm sure over in australia that that just were scared to leave their homes during the kind of height of it all because it was an invisible you know threat and no one really knew kind of how it would affect them mm. yeah absolutely yeah no, we no one knew um what direction to take and uh for me personally, I actually took it on, um, I took it on as, you know, as a bit of a challenge. I, I quite like, um, because I eat meat. So we've grown up scuba diving and, and catching fish and stuff like that with, uh, you know, when we're swimming and I grow my own vegetables and, you know, we've, we've always had chickens and ducks, not at the moment, but our neighbors supply us with eggs. So really for us, it was just business as usual. And, um, I, we're in our own little bubble, you know, there's lots of space. The, the virus never made it to Esperance. Um, so we still have to live under the usual um, uh, sort of regulations and rules that, that the rest of the state uh, is committed to. But, um, you know, I thought it, it was quite theatrical when I, I went to Perth occasionally and they had to wear masks. I quite liked it. I could hide. And all you could see was people's eyes. And I thought, well, that's really interesting because you focus on it and they're quite beautiful all of a sudden. And yeah, I mean, it, it was, there's some real positives out of it. Again, I'm, I'm in my own ignorant little bubble here. I know it's a lot tougher for so many, many more people and particularly the Eastern States. So yeah, I'm, I'm very, um, there's a lot of gratitude that you know, I am in this small country town, which has pros and cons, but yeah, avoided the whole, the whole, um, the virus altogether really at, at this point, at least. Now I wanted to take you back to, to kind of where it all started for you. I mean, do you remember where you first got an interest in acting? Do you remember where that came from? 
Uh, I don't know. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I was going to say I don't think I've ever been interested in acting. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Oh, I just... No, I mean, I have. Yeah, I went over to Melbourne. I was travelling Australia and um, I got to Melbourne and, uh, knew, you know, from Esperance, which is a small country town, I realised that they had television. <laughs> and I thought, great, I'll audition. And it was very lucky, just right place, right time. I had a general audition and I fell into it. So there was no... Uh, I didn't come with experience and training. Wasn't anywhere near a great actor and still a very average one. I'll, I'll be the first to admit. But... Um, Oh, I think I'm getting better. <laughs> but, but we had drama coaches there and, you know, we used those, those sorts of sources to help us improve and give us the tips. And over the years, I've worked with other, you know, directors in particular that have been really, really helpful and helped guide, you know, me through the, um, how, to, how to become a better actor, I suppose. Um, but, yeah, I took 15 years off. So I left Neighbours and just went around Australia for a year and uh, got fell in love with photography, landscape photography mostly. And... Um, yeah, went camping and then ended up in Esperance and thought, oh, this is nice. We'll stay here for a couple of years. And 18 years later and two children, I'm still here. <laughs> so, yeah. so, it's just easy living, I guess. And But I'm very lucky. You know, the modern world, of course, you don't need to be in an audition room in the city to get the next role. So um, I can just set up a little studio here, um, backdrop, and yeah, I can audition. And yeah, there's, there's a healthy amount of jobs coming in just here and there which is keeping me keeping me in the business i mean i imagine when a show like neighbors came about for you that must have been you know quite exciting because i mean were you a fan of the show had you ever seen it before before mm. joining it oh yeah i loved the show as a kid i had posters of kylie i shouldn't admit that <laughs> jason on the wall <laughs> it's terrible um i was the only one of my friends that would admit it and um yeah I, yeah it's I don't know if it's just coincidence. Maybe you make things happen, but um, I certainly uh, yeah, had a huge interest in it. and I loved working on the show too. For what, four or five years I was there. and um, Actually, I, I, you wouldn't believe it. I was just texting Carla Bonner, who has been on the show for something like 15 years, played Steph, just uh, literally before we got on this, this chat. Uh, you know, we've reconnected after all those years. And yeah, I'm looking forward to catching up with her once Victoria relaxes their, their travel van. But... Um, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 an institution, you know. Friends that I've some of them that I've made there have, have lasted you know, twenty years later, and um, I can't believe it's still going. To be honest, it's it seems to be growing of all things. It's getting bigger and better, and yeah, I mean, no one forgets neighbours. I was walking down the street last night, going out to dinner in Kalgoorlie, which is a mining town north of Esperance, um, with someone, and uh, a local indigenous guy comes up, and he's like. You're on the telly, you know, it's just straight away in your neighbours. 20 years later, like it does not leave you. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's part of your DNA. All of a sudden. So, I mean, that was one of the things I was, gonna, I was going to say. That was one of the things I was going to ask is whether you'd kept in contact. Because obviously, you know, um, being part of the sort of Kennedy family, obviously, you know, playing Libby's husband. I mean, working with people like Jackie Woodburn, Alan Fletcher, uh, Kim Valentine, Carla Bonner. I mean, have you kept in contact? What was it like working with them? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, not... Not really. I mean, it is 20 years later. I suppose initially I went back a few times. I was in a dream sequence, I think, and played a zombie on something. And yeah, I, uh, you know, you sort of, um, yeah, it's lovely to catch up with them then. And uh, Alan Fletcher shot me an email maybe a year ago now, just, you know, just a quick good day. But um, yeah, I, perhaps I'm one of those sorts of people that sort of moves to. Well, different relationships and, and different environments, different landscapes as well. So, yeah, I mean, it was really hard to let go. It was really hard to say goodbye. I'm not very good with goodbyes. And I remember when I left, I knew I had to go. Um, I had to do different things. So it would be lovely to be stuck there forever. Like, um, it would be very comfortable. But I really wanted to try new things. And I knew that was important for me to do for my own personal development and so on as well. So um, as tough as it was leaving, um, I remember when I got home, I thought I was okay. I walked in the front door after you know my little send off, and yeah, my partner at the time gave me a, a hug, and I just fell to pieces, and cried my eyes out. It's, couldn't couldn't explain it now, but it was yeah, that's only happened that time. So that's yeah, I guess that's a sign of. What I that, think that, that place was. Yeah, I think that's the amazing thing with with a with a show like Neighbours is it, it you know it's like a family. Everyone gets on so well. Um, you know, it always comes across that you all really get on and, and are you know very close knit. 
Mm. Oh, yeah, at the time you are. I mean, you're around each other for, you know, 12 sometimes hours a day uh, and often on the weekends as well. So it's a task to maintain that strong relationship as well. Um, I, I can, to be honest, I'd love to have kept in contact with a lot more people there. There were some amazing human beings. Um, I just, um, yeah, I don't know at the time. I, I think because it's quite intense as well, the workload I'm thinking more and just the, um, I was a little overwhelmed with the attention that it gets you um, from uh, the community, I suppose. I come from a little country town. You know, I, I found that quite, yeah, probably my, my, my attention quota was over full and overflowing <laughs> for the last couple of years. And I didn't need that much. And yeah, I, I suppose I just wanted to distance myself from that a little bit. So that sort of meant cutting ties. And that's why I went around Australia for a year. I, I bought a little old land cruiser, a full wheel drive, a, a boat, a little dinghy on the top and a camera and, took off for 12 months and just didn't have a plan, just went bush and found some amazing locations and, you know, crocodiles and coconut palms and all those wonderful waterfalls and stuff up north and took photos. Yeah. And uh, just took a year off, grew a big beard, dyed it bright red, which I think earned me more attention than being on Neighbours <laughs> at the end. <laughs> so it kind of backfired. <laughs> I mean, is, is fame, fame something that you ever get used to or is it something that you just don't like? Ah, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not famous in, um, it's very rarely, you know, I mean, I live in a little town where people, they just they think, think of me as part of the furniture now that the whole neighbors thing has disappeared, and, which is lovely. It's really good. They're more like family. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's thrilling for a while. It's enjoyable, you know, it's exciting. It's, it's pretty unique, but I certainly didn't need it. I don't think. Yeah. Um, I don't think I could be a you know proper celebrity. I think, yeah, I could see how it changes people and it probably changed me at the time too. So my task at the end was to come back to who I wanted to be and just pull, pull myself in a little bit. Yeah, not that I was off the rails. I just, um, yeah, it certainly does change you after a few years, that's for sure. You want to make sure that you're still grounded at the end. And I suppose that's great to have a, a, you know, have your family around you who can kind of, you know, keep your feet on the ground. So, I mean, w w were they a big help for you? Yeah, absolutely. And moving to, like I say, the little town, you know, you, everybody knows everything you're doing. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was a really quick way to, um, um, I guess, uh, yeah. If, if, um, well, just, just, just fit into the system that is here and that is to, um, to live up to sort of the expectations and standards that that you would think exist in such a small community. I mean, I'm saying that quite um, unconvinced because there, there are some, there's pros and cons, of course, you know, it, it does restrict you a little bit, some really insular thinking sometimes, but as I've gotten older, I think I've become a bit insular myself and a little bit more responsible. And yeah, I love, um, I love being here. You know, it's, it's one of those classic kind of, you see it in soap operas and dramas where the little communities become your family. Uh, it can take two hours to post a letter just because you're always in conversation. My kids hate going to school. Uh, sorry, going to town with me because I've had them at my feet just to sleep once in a conversation, chatting to a guy for 45 minutes. They just thought, oh, dad, really? Oh, we're not going to town with you. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> it takes forever just to do the single task. So it's really good. And then when you need them, they are there. Yeah, 100%, the whole town, you know, just bonds together. Uh, very big on environment here too, which is, is lovely. So, you know, when politicians say they're going to do something, well, the tandles, the town doesn't want it, it'll stand up and generally it doesn't happen. So it's nice to see that kind of, it's very empowering, I suppose. Yeah. So pros and cons and more cons and pros. <laughs> and I mean, I imagine <laughs> when, when your time on Neighbours came to an end, were you sad that they killed off your character or was that kind of a blessing in disguise for you? Um, yeah, no, that was, that was my choice. So I was, um, the, uh, I think there was another couple of years they offered. And again, I knew that, yeah, I just had to go. I, yeah, I wanted to learn. I mean, life's about, for me, it's about trial and trying and, multitude of things gaining lots of experiences and having those moments i don't really sit well doing the one thing for too long i'm surprised i'm still doing photography and the beauty of photography is that you can after 20 years you can you can change it you can do studio you can do underwater you can do in nature you can do aerial you know 
portraiture, landscape, whatever it is. And uh, you go into motion from stills. I'm sort of doing all of that now, which has been great. Um, and, uh, and it's growing and growing. Got some really nice clients, which is wonderful too. Um, yeah, but uh, oh God, just thinking the BBC contacted me the other day. How's this for a bit of a bummer? They said, oh, because I did a, did a bit of Blue Planet filming um, on David Attenborough's Blue Planet series oh, yeah, yeah. for Tiger Sharks up in Shark Bay for three weeks. Wonderful experience. And they said, oh, we can't get any of our usual um, cameramen. Could you go to Patagonia for two or three weeks and film glaciers and leopard seals? I went, yes, <laughs> I can. <laughs> when? And uh, um, uh, then we worked out that I can't leave the state because of COVID. And if I do... Uh, I can, I think, but I can't come back in uh, without, oh, could take forever. You know, got to get a flight, could take a month. Then you got quarantine, hotel. It, it just wasn't making any sense. So, um, yeah, so um, I had to forfeit that one. But, geez, I tell you, it's been, yeah, it's, it's the, the photography thing's been really wonderful, I must say. It's growing and growing and I really enjoy it and it's evolving. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that's your question. I got off tangent, didn't I? <laughs> no, I mean, like, that that's perfect. I, I mean, kids say that all the time. <laughs> I mean, for you, when obviously with, with the photography, is there an area that you kind of feel you enjoy the most? You know, a kind of a, a sort of a, a, a part of the photography that you, is just your favorite? Yeah, uh, well, it's nature. I love nature. You know, I've always loved because um, I guess I fell into it after it was like a, it was like a little decompression after the intensity of the neighbors' days. So I, I went, just did landscapes. And I remember at the time, I was like, no people, nothing man-made, except maybe a rusty old jetty. I like those. But nothing man or you know, there's some beautiful old castles in the UK. We don't have that here. But everything had to be very, um, very um, organic. So I guess reflecting on that now is I needed that. It was almost like a bit of balance in my life, a bit of therapy, I suppose. Um, I used to spend the weekends in Victoria driving down to the rainforest south and just by myself and just stay a night and drive down the little gravel tracks in the dense forest and take photos of the waterfalls and... Yeah, you know, I think that was my way of sort of having some sort of balance in my life. Um, but yeah, now it's evolved. I had to pay off some children for the last 12 years. So, you know, I, I did weddings. I did all sorts of things, which is a bit crazy. Uh, but now I'm very lucky, like I say. I've got um, a nice little pool of clients that are, we've got good relationships with them. And a lot of it's tourism. I do, I do mostly tourism stuff, um, which is brilliant. So uh, they're always fun jobs. Yeah, it's taken a long time and a lot of work. 10 or 12 years of struggling and um, living off the land simply because I couldn't afford food. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's no joke. I had to, uh, anyway, that's another story. But um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, um, yeah, it's so rewarding now that it's kind of working. Yeah. And would you say you've now finally sort of found your, and I don't mean this to sound in a horrible way, but kind of found your calling. Is this kind of where you're happiest now? Oh yeah. There's a good balance in my life. Yeah. Um, I, absolutely. I wish um, it's nothing better like walking out the backyard. And I'll do that in a minute because it's getting on here a bit and I'll, uh, I'll just get a, a bunch of vegetables, fresh vegetables straight out of the ground. Friends have been coming down to stay and uh, they find that fascinating, you know, and particularly if we're like on the weekend, we've got some beautiful weather coming. So we're going to go um, spear fishing. So we'll, we'll have fresh fish, we might have a lobster and then some vegetables. And um, it's a pretty good way of, you know, of living, I think, a very healthy way. I was getting, I'm getting healthier as I get older. Um, you know, I'm no vegan yet, but my friends will be, they're all vegan, gluten-free, animal right kind of people. And I'm like, wow, what's happening? Do I need to get on that wagon? <laughs> <laughs> so, but I've always, I've always eaten fish and chicken. So I think I'll, yeah. No, it is, it's, it's yeah, it's, it, it's a really lovely place at the moment. And it, I think that's a testament to say, look, if you do look at the bigger picture and work, um, hard i guess and, and 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 patiently at what you really want and focus on what you really want then you fill your days with stuff you really love and if you're doing that then it's not work you know it's it's a pleasure it's a joy and then you also surround yourself with good people and that's the other thing i've worked out is the girls that work here the people that work here um it's just a really lovely vibe my philosophy with work here is that you turn up when you want you go home when you want you have your breaks when you want and they own it then it's their they kept to take complete responsibility um it's a joy for them you know i'm they tell me what to do <laughs> it's kind of i get lists on the weekend 
So, uh, yeah, so that's, that's really, really lovely. And, you know, I approach all my, I'll pick the right people that you can do that with, let's say. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's great. Now I just want to say it's been a pleasure talking to you, but before we go, have you got any messages you'd like to give to anyone who's currently stuck in hospital at the moment? Anything you'd like to say to them? In a hospital? Oh, look, I mean, wow. I, yeah, I guess my compassion and my, uh, yeah, my empathy goes out to them. Um, I, you know, yeah, I've been in a hospital myself a few times, done some stupid things, um, had some bad luck as well. And um, yeah, best wishes. And I hope that uh, for whatever reason they're in there for, um, there's, there's a light at the end of the tunnel and it's an, a, posit a, a positive thing in the end. Um, and you're getting lots of flowers and cards. That's the main thing. <laughs> 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 now i just want to say dan it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much uh, for giving up your time uh, and of course keep safe thank you yeah you too matthew lovely talking to you